One night, I had a dream. The problem I got right now, some days I couldn't tell you if I ever woke up from that dream. See, one day, I found a watch. Next to it was a U.S. Marshal badge. And a sign, Town Needs a Marshal. Next to that sign was a hat. Yeah, I needed me a hat. But I couldn't take my eyes from that watch. Then I read the back of the sign. A lot of dead people around here. Hmm. I could have told you that one for free. Look at things a different way. Hell, yeah, I'm one of them. My name was Clinton Butler. Whole town considered me dead. But the good Dr. Roth oversaw the documents of my official rebirth. And after a year, clawing my way back from the dead, Marshal James Jennings I became. I don't know if this was my punishment. I don't know if this is my heaven or my hell. But it seems like I found that watch a thousand times over. In 1861, in the vicinity of Helena, Texas, a few rough acres of woodland were described by their solitary inhabitant as Harbor County. 
Reports suggested a small homestead sat somewhere on the land. Those who found it and set foot in the property were considered to be the guests of U.S. Marshal James Jennings. Stories of the mysterious Marshal grew. He became infamous amongst outlaws who claimed they had killed him in the town of Goliad years previously. In the summer months, a crude rope lined the boundary of Harbor County. By the onset of winter, only a single sign to the residents would be found. Inside redemption, a man could attest or disprove his sins. Mr. Jennings, I'm not sure how long this one's gone. Looks to me like she's done for. tried to take me in the barn. I had been right. He didn't believe me. And he... he... But take my word. I give you vengeance. And I make your husband swear. You're a good man, James. The sort of man I should have married. Make him suffer, Mr. Jennings. He's a bad man. So, you want to talk, my friend? And how you must be on fire down there. <laughs> now, I challenge any regular speaking man to sit in that chair with untreated venereal disease of the highest order and not say a word. Please, show me the compassion you're famed for. We are not in the land of hospitality here. I know things, Mr. Cooper. What do you know? She took to whoring herself to get back at you. That's not true. I'll tell you. You accused those boys of raping her when they did nothing of the sort. They thought it was paid for. I never agreed to that. They're making that up. Wait, there ain't nothing wrong with me, Mr. Jennings. Did you rape your wife? Are you playing mind games with me? Did the blade go in before or after? I'm an innocent man. That's the tragedy of death, I'm afraid. We had an argument a few days back, but I ain't seen much of her. When I got there... Susanna come round and uh, I told her Dr. Roth would be a good couple of hours away, but we could uh, cauterize the wound, all that, but she'd bled. She'd bled good. So she sat there and she said, find my husband. I won't die until you brought that bastard in front of me. Give her some honor and death. She's dead. Just acknowledge that you probably behind it. I'll make a deal with you. I'll sit here like this, no no pains, no crying, and 
And you'll see there ain't nothing wrong with me, which will prove that I did not do what you claim. I'll give you eight days to think about this. Now, if you can sit there for eight days and not demonstrate a symptom of the disease that I know will be ravaging your body, then you are a free man. And I am the devil for subjecting you to such a torture. Might be a good idea to shut your eyes for a little bit. Get some rest. I don't want you waking up with no fever. I don't want to get you well just to then watch you hang. You ain't never hanged a person in your life. Is that the compassion I'm famed for? That's what they say. You give people a chance to prove themselves. Stay alive long enough. You'll find out. <laughs> now your eight days, they begin now. Down by the river, I saw my girl, my girl, my girl. I don't know where to go next, but it's gonna be redemption. I don't know where Mr. Jenny's gone. I didn't stab her, and I don't know why people think that I would do that. She's my wife, you know. I don't know why people think I was gonna do that. Shut up. I don't know why everybody would have thought I would have done that, but they wasn't me. I mean, she's my wife. I... Shut up. Nobody wants to listen to me. Not even a dead man. Eight days. Why'd you put yourself through that, Mr. Cooper? Because I don't think a word about what they say about you is true. And now you know I am a man of my word. When am I going to hang, then? You're not going to hang, Coop. See, I challenged you. I said any man that can sit there with venereal disease of the highest order for eight days and not show any symptoms can walk free. I don't like you. I don't enjoy the pleasure of your company. But two things happened before I pulled you in that you were unaware of. You have a house girl called Callie. Is that correct? What she got to do with all this? Well, Callie has been the recipient of your desire for the past year, has she not? 
Yeah. I don't mind me saying, but she ain't exactly pretty. No. She's ugly as sin, but the only person who's laying with her is me. And Susanna caught you, waited for you to clean up, then confronted you. I'll never rape Susanna. I never stabbed her. I've been here eight days. Do you not believe me? No, uh, I believe you. It's the rest of the town that don't. You'd have been hanged a week ago if I hadn't pulled you in. You betrayed your wife. And she got back at you by opening her legs to the whole of the town. You're the man who's got to live with that. What I do next? We hanged William Cooper a week ago. I inspected your property. I found a will that you recently signed, leaving your estate to Callie Mitchell, but seizing all cash assets to deal with. Funeral, $20. Unpaid wages, $680. Unpaid bar tab, $16. General store payments in lieu, $410 and a clerk's fee for the remainder, approximately $3,400 for land holdings, identifications, and passage to a new world. You liquidated my business. No, we just paid up what you owed, and we got you a one-way ticket to not be annihilated by a baying mob who were quite prepared to pull you to pieces. You're for real, aren't you? You see this guy in front of me? I walked I don't know how long to find him. I dragged his sorry ass back here because rumor is this man is worth a hell of a lot of money. I was a rich man before I walked into this place. You're richer now. Believe me. Yeah, I'm starting to think that way. So, what next? Get yourself together. Have a look in that bag and understand why you came to redemption. My folks left England for a better life. William Cooper is leaving for a better life. One way he ain't dead. How'd you fix all this so quick? Wise up, Mr. Cooper. You're a healthy man. You start walking south and you'll hit the coastline in about three days if you get yourself down to what they now call in Corpus Christi. Go east, you'll hit Galveston. But that's about seven or eight days walk. So maybe you want to pick up a horse. Let it loose on the outskirts when you get there. But don't be trading because you a dead man walking. You got this all figured out, ain't you? I got this figured out same way for everybody. Hell, you're home free. Even if you jump a steamship takes you to New York. That don't matter. You just find another one heading home to queen and country. Being dead has a price. That it does, Mr. Cooper. That it does. So you're just going to let me go? Yeah. We had our talk. Life has moved on. Hey, you're dead to anyone who might have had a beef with you. You got a piece of paper that says you were somebody else. And you got a death certificate and documents that relate to a family friend. A week ago, I had everything. Now, I've got nothing. You've been redeemed. Now get out. Wait, you never bought me any shoes. Well, shoot. Have mine. I can't help you with that, Cooper. Why don't you ask the dead man here if he'll lend you his? Oh, be reasonable. It's freezing out there. Well, then improvise or ask the dead man. Can I take your shoes? Twenty dollars. I want a burial. Jennings can't pay that for me. 
$20. That boy is thinking ahead. <laughs> that it? Can I go now? Pay him the $20. Put it in his hand or put it in his shirt pocket. Why? You're only going to take it off him. I want my shoes back. Man wants his shoes back, Coop. I want my shoes back. Look, I'm putting five dollars in his hand. I don't care. I want my shoes back. Forty's not enough. A hundred. You're not 60 short, are you? No. Look, here's $100 for this man's shoes. Thank you, dead man. Next time, just pull a dead man's shoes off his feet. I stop feeling my legs out. What did he say? He said next time, just pull a dead man's shoes off his feet. He stopped feeling his legs. Hours ago. How about my hundred dollars back? Nuh uh. That man is next in that chair. Redemption has a price, Mr. Cooper. The more money you have coming in, the better your chances are of getting out. Got it? I need water. Water. I can give you water. But we live in parts where they sell liquor by the keg because it's cheaper than the water. But I can give you water. So, what's your name? This. It's sewn in my shoes. What's your name? I thought you knew Layla. My name isn't important. You'll kill me if I tell you. But I know Layla. Prove it to me. Leland saw his father hanged. Look. There's gonna be a Confederate man coming for you. He's an imposter. Imposter? You know this imposter's name? Jacob Folk. Jacob Folk. So your name, you know the name of the imposter, but you can't tell me yours. You'd kill me if I tell you. Well, I think she's done for, my friend. You know, my friend, that I have a gift, don't you? You know that I can hear you. I can translate your thoughts. And I think all you want to say is this. Why wouldn't you just let me die in peace? <laughs> I wouldn't have lasted the night in that cold. But you bring me here with your vengeance and your talk of redemption. Hell, I am redeemed. I'm a bad man, but a bad man dies the same way he lives, in the gutter.
I know who you are. You the devil taunting me on this strange night, girl. You gotta help. I don't gotta help. Leyland and Alicia are coming here. Jack of Fulford and his gang are hunting them. You seen that man outside? Which one? The one who was yelling or the dying one on the porch? The dying one. He said Fulford and his gang are union imposters. Look, I can't keep that man alive. This, this is redemption. This ain't a hospital. Well, Leyland and Alicia are coming with the doctor, so maybe you should drag him back inside and I can see what I can do to attend to him. If he ain't dead, you can't leave him outside. Not with this storm coming. Well, I guess you better get yourself inside then. You see that man outside, Rosanna? Uh, he's better off dead. I mean, I put the knife to him myself, if I have to. I mean, that's harsh, but humane. He's like a lame horse. He ain't gonna pull through. See, this room, this room is justice. It exists so the thieves Lawbreakers can have some kind of reckoning. By the dawn, yeah, we're going to have one swaying Jacob Fulford returning to settle a score with me. Do you understand? I mean, when he comes back, this time, he'll be prepared. You're drunk. Sober, you'd never be scared of Jacob Fulford and his gang. Mr. Jennings, before you bought this place and this acre, this was my family home. Did you know that? I mean, I'm shocked that you call it Harbor County and redemption and all, but I was only a little girl before my family moved that mile away into town. You weren't originally from Carnes, were you? No, my daddy said you were from Goliad County, is that right? He said you were a religious man who strived for order. Well, bless your daddy. And he speaks the truth. Yes, I strive for order. To a certain extent, I am a religious man. I am from Goliad County. But I fail to see what your connection with my land has to do with the massacre we may find ourselves the victims of. Oh, we won't be the victims of no massacre, Mr. Jennings. We came here to hide. <laughs> well, good luck hiding. Can I go through to your private quarters? I only got two rooms in this place. I wouldn't call either one of them private. But you go right ahead. You go look. Rosanna, 
Where did you just go? The ice store. You did know there's an ice store under here, didn't you? An ice store. Well. I know I got one now you told me. <laughs> How'd you get in it? Move the bed, lift the boards, and you can step on down into the abyss, Mr. Jennings. Now we'll be hiding on down there, and you can do your shooting up here. So you came to hide in a part of my place that I didn't even know existed? Well, my daddy dug it out kind of a secret and all. The man you bought the land from, well, he's dead now, but he harassed my daddy for, for quite some time. He thought there was something of value in the ground round here. Oil, I think. There wasn't. Not here, but before Daddy sold on, he satisfied his own curiosity. He spent two summers digging a hole. Big as a house and then bigger still. It's hard rock, so cool too. Nice hideaway from the sun. But Daddy didn't want no one knowing about the hole and he was a good carpenter, so he laid up a new floor. You can't even tell there's anything under there. Why didn't you just tell me this before, Rosanna? Well, I didn't really know you, did I? I still don't. I never had no reason to tell you anything, but I never had no one chasing and beating up my family before. Never had no reason to hide, but now I do find myself with reason to hide. I will hide in the best place I know. Look. I got liquor, and I got cups. So why don't you take a seat, and we'll sit this one out. That chair is reserved for lawbreakers. It's a chair, Mr. Jennings. You're gonna make me sit on the floor? Now, weren't you gonna attend to that corpse outside? I mean, <laughs> if he's still alive, that is. I just got no use for him in here. Mr. Jennings, I think he's dead. Oh, you think he's dead? <laughs> yeah, I thought he was dead. I mean, I was damn convinced he was dead. But if I didn't drag him a couple of hundred yards back to this place, then I could have been sleeping in my bed. And Jacob Fulford would have crept up on me and slit my throat whilst I slept. So the doctor definitely coming? Yes, Dr. Roth. From Golia County, like yourself. Oh, she don't like it around here. Says the injuries remind her of being on the battlefield. You know they started this new way of settling scores amongst the thieves in town. They tie a pair of them together, with buckskin at the arm. And they put a little one inch blade into their hands. And the betting in the circle right, it intensifies. Then the fight begins. And these fools, they slicing and cutting at each other because these little blades are only an inch thick they, they can't really deliver the fatal blow so these guys hell they're losing so much blood till eventually one of them hits the ground and the thing is it's the collapse it's the real killer because even if you deliver the death blow first Oh, hell, that man's bringing you down with him. I 
I seen it. Well, that's why I'm a man of law and a man of order. <sighs> We're better than that. We're not animals. We're not supposed to just cut each other to pieces. But that's what these men do. Look. Go see if we can drag that man back in here. Clean him up. Find out who he actually might be. Mr. Jennings. The man is gone. Hmm. Well, on a night like tonight, that just don't surprise me. I'm not account of you letting my wife and I hide here, Mr. Jennings. That Jacob Full Ford is crazy. You know you're the last of Karen Cower, don't you? I know what you come for. But I ain't ready to give it to you yet. So you're just gonna have to head back outside and wait for that storm to come in. Then you'll know where. Who are you talking to? Myself. I talk to myself a lot. Were they all comfortable down there? They're alive down there. I don't think I'll be saying that if they stayed in town. Hmm. You told them to hush down there? 
Mr. Jennings, at least you're about to have a baby. I don't think she's gonna be able to hush. Well, then I'm gonna have to go with what my gut's been telling me for the past few hours. I think the first life to come out of redemption ain't gonna be quiet about it. But we take that as a good omen. The way that room echoes, any screams be coming from that place. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're going to pierce the night like the devil himself. Can you tell time? Not proper. I get the hands the wrong way. See, I got a pocket watch. Yeah, I earned it, but... It was payment for a job, but it sits here, you know, pretty close to my heart, but I can't wind it and I can't read it. See, I never had the time to sit down with the damn thing and work a few things out. If you can't tell the time, then how do you know when the hangings are? I don't. I just know you walked from redemption into Helena at sunrise, and you on time. <laughs> Look, Rosanna, I'm in the sad business of keeping law, and that means killing people. I don't much like doing it. It makes me feel like a... Like a judge? Yeah like a judge. You know how old you are? Well, I know I'm not a little girl anymore. And they've been calling you a judge since however long ago that was. <laughs> the judge of Harbor County. <laughs> That's what the damn newspapers do for you. Yeah, you know, periodicals, magazines... Well, Leyland reads out that story to me whenever he needs to try and explain why he works with you. But the judge ain't all they call you, Mr. Jennings. They call you the devil of Helena. In a God-fearing world, I am. You ain't no devil, Mr. Jennings. You see, that's what the real devil don't like. I'm on the side of God because he is on the side of order. You have a wife before? Before when? Before you came to Helena. Well, maybe that's the paradox. What? You say some strange words, Mr. Jennings, for someone who can't read and who can't tell time. What does that mean? I've been telling you too much all night, but you're curious. I can see that. I've been curious all my life. It's just that nobody ain't ever told me anything. Well, look, you want to learn about the world? Well, you got to get on a steamship and cross the ocean. That what you did? I seen the other side. But that's why I came back. You came back and started hanging people. No, I came back and I started educating people up east. A lot of people asked me to start preaching instead, but I said, I never want to proclaim the words of that book. It's a story that God don't ask you to read, so why make others listen? So you weren't a preacher? The stories say you turned your back on God a long time ago. I turn my back on preaching to the converted. Churchgoer don't think for himself. He thinks what the preachers just told him. His neighbor agrees with him because the preacher told him the same thing a week ago. Don't explain why you kill people. Look, I came back to Goliad expecting my family, my wife, to still be around. I didn't know, but I'd been gone for 10 years. You see, the night before I left, this old Indian comes down from the forest. He 
stands at my door and looks at me with an arrow and points at the babe wrapped up in the cart. Indian cuts me. Then he takes the babe away into the night. I saw the Indian in my dream. The Indian said he'd taken my baby to ensure good passage for the journey that I was about to undertake. When I came back to Goliad all those years later, my cousin had taken my wife as his own. She dragged up the past, said it was me sacrificing our baby that justified her adultery. Ten years away, and what do you think they try and do? Kill me in the bath. Are you trying to scare me up, Mr. Jennings? Bad enough we waiting here to be shot up. You sit there telling me your tragedy? Rosanna, have you ever seen a photograph? I've seen some from time to time. Would you like to see a photograph? Well, who's it going to be a picture of? Me. Is it a nice picture? No. It's a death pose. You still want to see? Is that really you? I ain't no doctor, but... You got an axe in your head. And an axe in your head usually means you a dead man, and in that picture you look dead. You have succeeded in scaring me, Mr. Jennings. No commotion, Dr. Roth. You have a look at the picture for us. I know. You've showed me before a hundred times. It's you, James. It's the same face I'm looking at now. What's this about? You playing tricks on Rosanna? I'm just telling Rosanna the truth. You know the truth about me being dead in that bath. How are you still alive, old man? Look, I need to be back downstairs with Alicia. But Rosanna, you need to believe what's right for you with Mr. Jennings. You can't explain it quickly. The Indian came to me in my head. Showed me the path to follow. Next time I open my eyes, I woke up in this place. I didn't know how I got here or what I was supposed to do, except in my hand I had a newspaper and in it it had a story about a man who was murdered by his wife with a little line drawing of that death pose. How'd you get better? Rosanna. I didn't get better. Well, your wife and your cousin don't sound like the sort of people I'd like to mix with. Life weaves us a circle. That day the Indian left you at my door with the axe on your chest, do you remember? In my mind, it's clear as day. I never thought I'd be so happy to see something broken. Anyone would think this was a sewing circle, the yarns you spinning. Do you not know the outcome of this yarn, then, Rosanna? It's a story about an axe. Well? They ain't no explanation. It's just a dead man looked like Mr. Jennings. No, that was Mr. Jennings. Show me your charm, James. I thought we was going to be getting shot at. What are you showing me? Sacred piece of metal. There's life in this metal. You see that? That's a perfect fracture curve. You know when metal's been badly forged and it gets too cold and cracks under pressure? Well, the old axe that me and my father had used for many years was just that. Badly forged. It was just waiting for the right hit to crack the metal clean through. I knew that. My father knew that. 
so we respected the flaw. Thieves who stole that axe, well, they didn't know that. They used the axe for murder. In their barbaric excitement, they hit the poor school teacher so hard that they snapped the metal and lost it inside her flesh without realizing. She was dead in a single blow. Now, James here was in the bath, but it was dark, and they struck his head with such force that the axe clamped around his head. Blood seeped out, and they couldn't even pull the weapon free. <sighs> to their eyes, James here was dead with an axe in his head. The deed was done, and the murderers escaped into darkness. Well, I reckon dawn's just about to break, so you best keep your wits about you. Mr. Jennings. God's called me, Rosanna. I don't know what you're saying, Mr. Jennings. Go downstairs and help with Alicia. But I, I... I told you, Rosanna. God has called me. I know what you come for, my friend. But this time, you can't take my baby. So you're gonna have to take me instead. I mean, this is precious metal. I understand what happens when I give this up. I know what's coming to me. So it's yours now, my friend.
people with you, Sia. So but the two of us. Oh, no, I... I reckon there's at least four people who will witness to the fact that you are just a coward and a cold-blooded murderer, Jacob Fulford. You want to know your dead? Yes. I'll give myself a minute. Shame you didn't shoot my watch. Yeah, that maybe could have saved my life. I think it started ticking. <laughs> You could not die. But I have injured you with their weapons. You didn't just shoot me, Jacob Fulford. I just opened the door. <laughs> When that watch stops, I'll be dead. Now, if you keep that watch, just remember one thing. That watch, it don't tell time. It tells you how long you got left. Well, you just remember, Mr. Fulford. Redemption. Redemption is a magnet for souls like you. Leave, Fulford. Your precious judge is gone. Have I not done enough to come in? No. Cowardly act like that doesn't deserve anything at all. We don't want you. You can leave. I have this watch. I have his power now, do I not? You're a cursed man now, Jacob. Leave. We have our own business to settle. Just let me die in peace. <laughs> I wouldn't have lasted the night in that cold. But you bring me here with your vengeance and your talk of redemption. Hell, I am redeemed. Redemption is a magnet for souls like you. You the devil torn me on a strange night, bro? You gotta help! Is he coming back? Find out tomorrow. What does that mean, Dr. Ra? Think about what he told you, Rosanna. Well, Mr. Jennings tells me a lot of things. He told you everything you need to know about him. You don't know much about the law in these parts. 
do you? Spring 1862, the remains of a small rural homestead were found by U.S. Marshals searching for their brother in arms, James Jennings. In the near frozen location, personal effects were found abandoned in the snow, and a crude rope marked the boundary. Months earlier, the sounds of an intense battle were reported by the townsfolk of Helena. Explosions and the screams of a posse of Confederate Army deserters. No evidence of any such battle could be found. The marshals had been led to the location by a respected Goliath doctor. Make sure Dr. Roth knows what's going on. The young family, also present, insisted a girl had come from the woods to guide them to the property and help them seek refuge in a hidden underground ice house. In their report to superiors, the marshals noted that despite an extensive search, no additional rooms were uncovered. The body of James Jennings, also known as the judge, was never found and the testimony of the group reduced to that of drunken hysteria on a macabre night of celebration. All Hallows Eve. One night, I had a dream. The problem I got right now, some days, I couldn't tell you if I ever woke up from that dream. 